Well, listen, I, I, I've allotted one and a half minutes for this, so there's no hurry. you got a, <laughs> one minute and 30 seconds. Whatever you can get in, I'm on board for it. So that's like after we click record, a minute and 30. Otherwise, I guess we got to go ahead yeah, and go. Yeah. Actually, I'm looking now. This wraps it up. Anyway, nice to talk to you guys. Good luck with everything. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jim, thank you so much for doing this, man. We really appreciate you giving us our time. Or giving us your time. Get, yeah, you're, you're welcome for yeah, you're, you're welcome, welcome for, for us giving time. you our time. Yeah, really. Thank you for letting me give you your time to me. Yeah. Thank you so much. I I greatly appreciate it. <laughs> so you know me, Kyle. This is uh, my partner Nick. He's been uh, pretty much my business partner since yep. we started this whole thing. Actually, yep. hey Nick. Hey, how's it going, Jim? You know, it's funny that Good. this is our, uh, our today is our one year anniversary for our network. Oh, wow. So this is going to come out on Monday. Yep. And, uh, you know, we're going to put it on our YouTube. But, yeah, this is our one-year anniversary. Yep. So, so what do you mean for you. your network? So we, we have different shows that we do on ours. So we have a sports show. We have a wrestling podcast. We have a Cancel Us. I guess that's um, – Cancel Us podcast. It's two friends, a guy and a girl, that just talk about controversial topics. One of them's in their later uh, mid-30s. The other one's 19. So they have di- different – differences of, of opinions uh and then sure. we we also have some other stuff coming up we have a nerd culture so we're, of course we're all big into uh you know mandalorian <clears throat> and <clears throat> uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know, you're, you're gonna get asked that one point blank uh, yeah <laughs> so you know we, we have a bunch of just a bunch of shows and we decided to make it a uh a network so there's uh three of us that run the network and we all kind of uh join together to to come up with the the space and all of the equipment, we fund it all ourselves. We have people. We have some that are up in New Jersey. Some are in Fort Walton Beach. Some, uh, yeah, wow. so, so we actually buy their their equipment and then they we uh, they use that equipment to record their podcast. And we try to try to become a little family and produce a lot of content on every single day of the week is what we're trying to get well, to. What we're trying you guys to get are to. frozen. Oh, what I do? Am I frozen to you? No, uh, you're I not. can see you. Can you hear us still? Now you're back. There yeah, we you go. Throws it up there for a second. You know, my sister started a podcast with her and her friend, and it's just called "We're Not Your Mothers," and it's two <laughs> women in their sixties giving advice. Uh, and it, I, I got to tell you, I've really enjoyed it. It's, it, I, I guessed it on it. You know, of course, it's my sister, and uh, it, it's just really they're, they're just two girlfriends having fun doing a podcast together. People send in send them questions, and they give their views. A lot of you know. Well, you know, wedding stuff, you know, a lot, a lot of girl stuff because it's two moms talking or whatever. But yeah, I, I, these podcasts are a lot of fun. You know, it's funny you say that because that's something that him and I have talked about just because we want to add more shows to our network. And, you know, yeah. there's some things that him and I have bounced off of each other. I, I'm 30. He's almost 30. And uh, he's a uh, we're both married. He's a dad. I, I don't have any kids. And, uh, you know, we're just kind of I would say the same path, but just a little different. And, uh, you know, it would be cool to, to do something just you and I. Because him and I don't have, actually have a show to get just, just that are just him and I. We have some other guys that are on there with us. And Oh, I assume this was a show you guys did together. So this is actually, we're going to run this as a, um, we're going to call this a Ride On Network special, pretty much. Like our one-year birthday special. So this one's not going to be on a specific show. I mean, you know, unless you get We're going to post it Man- to all the shows. We're going to post it to all the shows right. unless we get a little right. Mandalorian leak that could end up being on Nerd Culture. Yeah. <laughs> but... You know, that's just completely. What is this Mandalorian you keep speaking of? I don't know. I, I don't, you tell me. Yes. I mean, what, I what, from what we've been told, you have the inside track. That's what we've <laughs> been told. Know. I know nothing about nothing. Actually, that's my, what I've that's what my, I've learned. <laughs> my sources told me that you're directly taking Gina Carano's role. I don't. Gina, <laughs> Gina who? I don't know. Uh, wait, what, I got to put you guys on mute for one second. Yeah. <laughs> guys, these, these assholes have figured it out. <laughs> yes. No, I'm going to, I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it. Cool. Hold on. Okay. You're back. Hey guys, I had to take a call. Yeah. I, um, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> well, uh, I do want to go ahead and ask you the first question. I mean, kind of just go ahead and roll right into it. If you don't mind. I mean, would a great conversation, but we've enjoyed the Grode show. By the way, oh god, <laughs> we 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 absolutely love it. It's kind of perfect for like us because we're immature dummies. Yep. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's great. It, it's As really perfect. I. And I, yeah. I actually downloaded a soundbite just for you for this. I figured it was 
Welcome to Grode. <laughs> but what's funny about that is that entire soundbite is actually on a loop, and we didn't realize when we put it on there. So when we first started testing it, we're still talking to each other over Zoom, and it just continuously started to <laughs> do that. <laughs> and we were like, what the hell is it's going gone. on? We put yeah. the damn you know, there was an loop. episode uh, uh, just – Totally unrelated, but yet related. Of parks where I had a fart and a bend fart over attack. and split my pants. Oh. Anyway, and, and Amy said to me, "Are you okay? You know, is this? Are you comfortable doing that kind of thing?" And I was like, "Are you kidding? I live for that kind of thing. <laughs> Farting and splitting my pants. I was yes. born for that." Yeah. <laughs> I feel like because you know some people would hear that sound bite and go, "Oh, that's disgusting." Yeah. Oh, oh. Yep. Not me. It makes me laugh because I'm a child. I just don't think it's realistic enough. You know, I, yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> It could be a little wetter. It could be, it right. It could be a little wetter. Yeah, yeah, you know, and as we we tried to get the real thing, but we kept getting these little brown stains on the mics, and we kept having to get new yeah. fo- So we just decided to just download something. Yeah, no, you got to be, you know, there's something about <laughs> cleanliness. And yeah. Yes, yes. So, so tell us about the Grode Show. Tell us about this this whole idea that came about. Well, uh, Stephen Cogan, he, it, it's his thing. I did a film for him uh, years ago. And uh, we just stayed in contact. He's a really creative guy, young guy. And uh, I love the premise. You know how they say angels come down and they make things better for people and they help people. Uh, I was sent from hell to ruin someone's <laughs> life. And I just think that's a really, I think it's a fun premise. And Stephen's doing it, you know, totally grassroots. There's no money involved. Um, none of us, you know, I don't take a salary or anything until, you know, if something were to happen with it, then that would be a different thing. But basically, now I'm stuck on Earth, and I am this guy's uh, problem. And so I don't know any, you know, I, I don't know manners. I don't know how to interact with people other than to be obnoxious and gross. And uh, so it's just my, it's you know, I've been, st- I'm stuck on Earth now. I didn't get to go back to hell where I wanted to go. Uh, so I'm stuck on Earth and just trying to make my way through. And uh He's just created some really fun, ridiculous situations uh, that, uh, you know, I'm on board for. I love it because I think one of my favorite scenes so far is I think it's on the street in the second episode. And you just go through and you fart and you're. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. That was yeah. a good one. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, impressive. Yeah. Uh, and the I think the one question I have is, so why the delay in the episodes in between? It's just, it, it's, it, it'd be one thing, like say a studio bought it, you could shoot 10 in a row financially, but Steven is just doing this, uh, doing it the best he can, uh, re- raising the money. So it's just, I think it's finances. I think uh, he's got the episodes he has, like, it, it, you know, somebody handed him a couple million dollars, we could shoot a bunch of them, but uh, that hasn't happened yet. And so doing it as we can, but he's really, uh, he's a hard worker. He gets it all done. He makes things happen. So I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he calls me and goes, <laughs> we got a deal somewhere. He, he's really a creative guy. So you never know. It's a crazy business. And I like doing, um, you know, because I've had people go, well, you know, why do you still do little projects like that? Well, first of all, that's, I'm very blessed. I also get big projects and they, those are the projects that pay the bills and you know make sure that i keep a roof over my head and 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 you know all that kind of good stuff uh but i like crazy i like fun i like um material that is uh different than everything else and so if i can do that on my free time because steven knows we shoot these when i'm available um he he totally knows i could call him last minute and go dude i'm so sorry i'm heading to wherever to shoot whatever uh you know because that is my main that's how i you know that's how i make my living yeah. so uh, he just works around all that but i lo- you know i did a film uh, right after parks and recreation called middleman and it was this really uh it's a dark dark film and uh we got actors on that film to work for nothing compared to what they normally make and it was because of the script so if you give people good fun material They'll jump on board. I mean, they will jump on board again when they can work it around their schedule of the stuff that pays the big money. Right. So you know, the nice thing about TV and film is when you do work, they, you know, they pay a pretty decently. So it's, you know, makes what, are the, what are the odds of us getting in on the ground floor? I know you already done some episodes <laughs> over Zoom, 
I mean, <laughs> we want to be on the Grove Show. A, ca- a cameo here. Yeah, listen, uh, it's super simple. Two point five million. Can I count you guys in? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'll, I'll, we'll wire over the money immediately. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> could you Venmo two point five million or Zell? I'm not sure if you can yeah. do that. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on one second. I mean, they can decline us just as easily um, over that <laughs> or a regular bank. Hey, this asshole is asking for one like two and a half million dollars. <laughs> we can cancel this whole thing, right? Okay. No, I'm well, sorry, my wife. Put, yeah. And I got to put you guys on hold again. <laughs> hey, these assholes are going to go for it. Yeah, we're going to get two point five million. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you in Cabo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, we're. I'm back, you guys. I'm sorry. I was. Uh, I'm dealing with some Russian Ukraine situations. Oh, yeah. oh uh, gosh. Oh gosh. Yes. Oh my goodness. But anyway, uh, no. We'll use that money. We'll put it to good use. So I yeah. <laughs> Thank you. on a vacation or anything. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. We appreciate that. Um, so the fir- I, I, I don't want to stay too long on that, but the first couple episodes were through Zoom, and then the one that was yeah. just released, I think, what, like less than two weeks ago, you guys were actually in person. What, what, yeah. what was that like, finally being able to work in person with them? Well, this whole getting to work in person in general is, uh, wow, it, it's been crazy. I was um, fortunate, you know, everything shut down March of 20, and uh, at least in my world. And I, I was, I, what did it, I'm going to say November, I think November was my first time back to work with other people. And, you know, cause during the pandemic, we did a parks episode and I did a film that cameras were sent to my home and, you know, we worked out other things, but as far as being in person, it was November. And that to me felt like forever, but I have friends who are like, are you kidding? You were lucky. Uh, you got to go back by November. But it's crazy because there's so many rules. And uh, Mike Shore, who, who co-created Parks and Rec, he said, like, when we were shooting the Parks episode via, kind of via Zoom, but not really. But anyway, uh, he said, this is just not how you make television. This is not good. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. And so, yeah, when we got to go back finally for Groad, it was fun. Uh, I hadn't seen Stephen in person in ages, uh, probably a couple of years. And, me, you know, I, I didn't know the other actors other than Zoom. So it was fun to get to say hi to people. Uh, but there's still protocols. There's still maskings. There's still testing. Y- you got to do it all. Um, and and showbiz, uh, at least in L.A. as of now, we're still heavy into all the protocols. So even though L.A. has lightened up, like they just stopped the mask mandate, um, I believe the, within the last couple of days. And... But still, when you go on set, you have to be tested. You still have to be six feet apart. I mean, all, all that is still in place. And, and I'm really, you know, like everybody, I'm over all of it. You know, just mentally, I get it. I'm done. I am I want it to end. But I am also, I get it. If these are the rules that it takes for me to keep working, I am on board. I will do those rules. I'm fully vaccinated. I've done whatever I have been asked to do. Uh, to make other people safe as well as keep myself safe, you know. So, yeah, but it was fun to get to be in person and do that. You know, that was going to... I could do a fake fart in person. Yeah. (laughs) That was actually going to be a question. (laughs) Yeah, that that was going to be a question of ours as well, because, you know, we're from Florida, so they didn't exactly have such a huge mask mandate. Yes, I was in Pensacola a couple weeks ago. Okay, that's where we met. It yeah, didn't yeah, exist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The mask mandates have been gone for a long. Like, uh, I actually work for a company that I have to. I had to wear. They just lifted our mask mandate as well. And uh, but I had to wear one, and I felt like I was the only weirdo. I was like, well, I'm, uh, yeah. you know, I'm just doing what I'm, what I have to. But I'm like, you know, over here there well, just, just wasn't that much. From, I got back from Vegas the other day, and nobody there. Was, yeah, it, it's. I feel like, and I hope I'm. I hope this is true. I feel like where they've figured out not I know there will always be cases and scary stuff I feel I hope I'm not jumping I feel we're over the hump I I feel we're we can go out into the public um if you've had your vax hopefully you know people have or you know whatever people are going to do but uh you'll be safer and if you don't have any high risk things you right. know whether you've had diabetes or whatever you know all the things we've all heard over the years because people sadly are still dying from it mm-hmm. but if you're just the regular joe or mary out in the world 
I think we're coming back, you know, and I, and I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I want us to come back yeah. safely, but I want us to come back. You know, it's funny. Cause uh, I was actually in Vegas in uh, October of 20. And oh, wow. It was, what was that like? It, it was, I, that's the only time I've ever been to Vegas and it was extremely weird. Uh, we couldn't, yeah. none of the shows were available, so we couldn't do any sure. of the shows. And we had booked nine days. Oh, uh, and that's I was a like, long time in Vegas. It was, it was entirely way too long, especially because yeah. we were thinking, like, maybe the shows will be back by then. Maybe not. We'll, yeah. we'll see what happens. We ended up, you know, trying to hit some of the states around. We even went to L.A. for uh, a day when, yeah. the, uh, uh, when the Dodgers won the World Series, actually. We were in oh, L.A. There you go. That was kind of yeah. cool, even though I hate the Dodgers. But yeah. that's on a day. <laughs> I mean, I'm a Braves fan. So, but, yeah, it, it, was, it was definitely different. Definitely. You just click something when you said that they were had no masks on in Vegas and I was like they were like chasing yeah. us down over there we were pulling them down and there were like cops telling us to put them back up and everything back so, up, yeah, yeah even outside it was it was different for us my brother lives in Vegas and I said what is it like he lives outside of Vegas but still in the area and him and his wife got in the car one night and just drove down the strip and he said it was just the creepiest thing ever <laughs> because you know Vegas at night there's Nothing more exciting. The energy, the lights, the, just the atmosphere. Nothing, mm. nothing. He nice. said it was so creepy. But uh, I, and one of the, I was at one of the hotels, Aria or one of them, the other day, and they were telling me that they, for three months, completely shut down. I mean, just everything. So it, it's so weird because Vegas is twenty four seven. It's just that's what you know Vegas as. And, and wow, to be there for nine days with nothing going on, that that's ugh, that's tough. Yeah, it, it was it was a little different. It was a little so we stayed were away. Were you able to gamble? Uh yeah, we were able to gamble. What was funny about it is they still allowed smoking. <laughs> yeah, they well, of course. Yes, I, mean, yes, I was yes, like, yes. what do we, so we we have to wear our mask inside, but they can puff on a cigarette and blow yeah. blow smoke <laughs> inside the casino. It was yeah. it was very strange, but you know, it was it, it was it was something, you know. That's yeah. all I, well, I would like to go back. I'm gonna tell you. Go back again. Yeah. Because you should. Yeah. But also, never book nine days in Vegas, no. <laughs> even when it's up and running. That place is exhausting. Yeah, it Three, was. four days, get the hell out of there. Yep. Well, I think it was for a so it was for a softball tournament. Yeah. So, like, four days of it were set aside oh, okay. for that. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. I yeah. So, I, that's probably yeah. Right. so, we were there for, like, the weekend, and then we had the softball yeah. tournament, and then we stayed the rest of the weekend and stuff like that. So, it wasn't like we were hardcore gambling. I mean, I'm from Panama City, Florida. There was no way in the world I was going to have enough money to gamble for nine days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You don't always win. What do you mean? No, I mean, so I no. thought everybody wins in Vegas. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. No, I've I, never I, met a loser out of Vegas. I know. I, I want to yeah. go yeah. to Vegas just to lose. Like yeah. I want that experience. <laughs> wow. that's, the one, that's the one I want. I want to like, well, then you would have enjoyed the weekend. I just spent. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, You would have loved it. <laughs> it would have been great. And then you had to come do an interview with, the fat guy and a guy with a big nose. Like, imagine that. Wow. Yeah. I tell you, it's, it, it's tough to deal. You know, I've done, I've turned you guys off. I'm actually not looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny. Too... I have a big nose. I hear you have a massive tongue. Uh, let's just say there's a couple parts of my body that would be considered massive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we yeah. saw no. the scene with the doctor in parts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, and you know, that came about because one of the writers was next to me at the urinal and he got the idea. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> You know, that's just how life is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're so you're not gonna give us any leads on the Mandalorian and I respect that, but I just I, do I don't even know. know what you're talking about, Mandalorian. I've never heard of it. I don't know anything about Star Wars. I don't know anything about <laughs> that I was shooting it. Um no, I don't know. <laughs> so Star Wars separately though, like have have you always been a Star Wars fan? I, I love I I'm not one of those guys who can um uh quote this and that about it but i love the films i love like all your all the all, star wars star trek uh um marvel films i love them for the spectacle that they are but you know there's people who can quote different things in this lineage of this person to this person and this i can't do any of that yeah no and there's That's there's me. diehards out there I, <laughs> i'm not that guy but i love the films i love going to a big film uh and just seeing the, the magic of that but uh I, I wouldn't say die hard that i know every little thing about it but I, i'm a fan I, I guess i have i've told the story before but um i did one episode of a star trek you know they star trek had different things and it was called star trek voyager and i did one episode 
uh, you know, just as a guest star. And then, I don't know, a year later, I was selling a condominium in LA and some man was buying his kid a, a condo, you know, as you do, I guess. Yeah. How nice for the kid. <laughs> So Screw my they dad. come walking the through, and the, yeah, yeah, nice dad. My, yeah. my dad didn't yeah. buy me a condo, but nice for him. I can't get my dad to uh, buy me a Coke. Yeah, real. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I heard your dad tried to sell you, so buying yeah. was not even um, exactly. Yeah, and, and the saddest part, not no takers, absolutely yeah. no takers. Oh, he yeah. ended up having but, to pay somebody else. Yeah, yeah, there was. I read the blogs anyway. Um, so anyway, I, the kids walk around. He recognizes me from this one episode of a Star Trek Voyager and talked his dad into buying the condominium because I had lived there. <laughs> they, bought they bought the damn thing. So, I mean, these, the Star Wars and the Star Trek and all these, you know, monstrous franchises, the people are rabid. The fans yeah. are rabid. And uh, I made a lot of money because that kid saw, saw maybe <laughs> I was the my and my character, I was in a group called the the husbands or something, and they had this vagina like looking thing on my forehead. <laughs> like it, it was crazy, um, but anyway, yeah. So, but yes, to go back to your question, I love them. I am not a diehard. I, I couldn't sit and quote things, you know. Right, right. Uh, so now we're gonna move past the Mandalorian stuff because we we understand. Uh, but so, what is a role that you feel that kind of got away from you that you just you really wanted but it kind of got away? Any part that Brad Pitt has gotten. Um, <laughs> I, I understand. I, I see the resemblance. I feel we're the same guy, kind of, mm -hmm. and I've never understood. <laughs> uh, no, it's hard to say because I'm a character actor, and there's good and bad with it. I think ultimately it's good because uh, a character actor can really have a, a career, a full, like, a long career your you know young hot women young hot men if you're not established as that by a certain point you're probably going to fall off the grid right uh, you know your people like your brad pitts and your angelina jolie's and all those people they've established young and they stayed there but it's a tough business if you're just another pretty face who hasn't made it whatever that really means uh by a certain point so uh, there's many roles I've auditioned for that I didn't go my way and I really wish they had, but I've never, you know, I'm not up ever for the co-lead of a film. I'm the supporting player. I'm the neighbor. I'm the funny fat guy who fell and whatever. And <laughs> it's all great. I, I love doing all of that. It, 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 it's amazing. So it's hard to say. Uh, there have been a couple of pilots that I've done that didn't get picked up and I've never understood certain how certain things work because I would see a show that did get picked up and think how the hell did that piece of garbage win out over this thing and I never take credit it's not like oh I'm in it of course it's better no 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 it's because the writing was better and I felt the cast was better or whatever uh so there's been a couple of those that just make me crazy you know when you get the phone call well it's not going forward that sucks. Yeah. That there's it's just the worst feeling. Though there's not a better feeling when you get the phone call. <laughs> it got picked up. Right. Yeah. You know. I mean, that's that's like the greatest feeling in the world. I think I like uh, you most as a cop. Uh, I keep seeing yeah. you in, in your roles as cops. I wish you would have been had a bigger role in uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh, that was and that was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> I that's like one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, they, you know, Dan Gore, who create, you know, co-created Brooklyn Nine Nine with Mike Shore, who co-created Parks and Recreation, and the Office. And Dan right? was one of our guys for years, uh, and he called and, and he said, "Listen, I, we got this idea for this two episode, you know, for Brooklyn Nine Nine." And I had worked with Andy before, so of course I loved Andy, uh, and I had never worked with andre brower so i was like yeah that would be so cool uh, and i knew chelsea anyway i knew some of the cast um but the thing with the thing with dan i give dan knows he could call me tomorrow and say i've written this thing that will probably be a big failure but would you do it for me and i would say <laughs> yes because i give dan most of the credit for the fact that i get i was on parks and recreation for seven years 
And that's because he came up with the idea, the bit in season two, uh, where Jerry finds out he's adopted and he didn't know it. Oh and God. they realized <laughs> that's who Jerry's going to be. And that was Dan's bit. So I'm always like, Dan, you, you, sir. Now, and he'll be, he'll, you know, he's still self-deprecating. Oh no, they would, someone else would have come up or they would have come up with something else. I go, I know, I know, I know. But that's what it turned out to be. And for me, it was the game changer, you know, as an actor looking to stay on a show. And uh, so, yeah, Dan knows he could call with anything and I, w I would be there. Yeah. Yeah. So when he called about Brooklyn, it was it was just a matter of scheduling, you know, right. uh, how are we going to make it work out? And once that was figured out, it was just a breeze. And then I got to work with Andre Brower, which was so cool because he <laughs> was so cool. Uh, and of course, Andy and... Um, yeah, that was a great experience. Is, that was a lot of fun. Is Andre that dry in person, like as he is on like everything that he does? Because we uh, at Pensacon, the same thing. Juan Carlo Esposito always plays a bad guy, and then when he did his Q and A, he was like so up and giddy. Like it's yes. like, man, these guys are nowhere near the way they are on camera, except for you, of course. This is exactly the way I envisioned this yeah. going. I <laughs> yeah, love exactly. that. I am the asshole you were hoping. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You haven't farted uh, though. So I actually ended upset. up sitting next to Juan on the flight home. Really. It was so cool because I'm a big fan of, you know, of course, Breaking Bad and and and, and uh, uh, Better Call Saul and, and all that kind of stuff and of him in general. So, yeah, he what a gracious, fun guy. Uh, and he was memorizing something and I was memorizing something because, you know, that's what you do on planes because you're always either heading to the next job or whatever, but you're, you always got material. You're always trying to memorize. And uh Anyway, so what a wonderful, wonderful man. Yeah, but you're right. And he was much more gregarious than I ever thought he would have been. So you sat next to Juan Carlo. I wonder, there's a show that he's on that I feel like he probably could have got you cat. Hmm. You know, I, I feel like, doesn't he, he plays a yeah. certain role in a certain show, doesn't he? Hmm. I don't know what you're speaking of. Another show I know nothing of. <laughs> I just I just put two and two together here, and I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I am the dumbest Another guy show. in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Another show. No, that's what's fun about these cons. I've only I've only done a handful of them, but you get to meet some people that you really like. I'm a. I don't even know if you guys will know who this is, but right across from me at the con was um, a guy named Dennis O'Hare. Now, lots of Broadway. American Horror Story. He's in all the franchises of it. Um, and I have just been a big fan of his forever. And he's from, you know, he's worked in Chicago, but of course is my hometown. And so I got to hang with him and we, we kind of figured out we might be related, which sounds crazy, but it could be true back in Ireland kind of thing. Anyway, and so he was there. Um, yeah, the cons are great. You get to meet people you never thought you'd get to meet, and and uh, like I would the last one I was at, Catherine Tate was at, and I oh man, am just you know, and what was weird about that one, I saw her and realized she was there, and I was like, okay, before this weekend is over, get up the nerve <laughs> and just go over and say hello and tell her how much you love her. Well, day two, I'm sitting in the green room where they, you know, they give you food and stuff to, you know, because it's these cons are very exhausting. I know some people don't get it, but. They're exhausting. You I have was, to be on. I, I, I do. I, I was going to bring that up at some point, and I forgot to write it down on here. I wanted to ask what that's like, so I'm glad you brought that up. Like, working those cons, dude, I yeah. mean, you were there for all three days, right? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, that's why I've only done a handful of them. Some people do them one or two a month. I, I couldn't do it. I, I just couldn't do it. I, I couldn't physically do it. It's uh, because I also feel I, I would never want someone to feel I didn't give them their time you know now i've seen some of these where you walk up they sign something they hand it to you and they walk and you walk away like that's just all it's going to be i had my heart broken at pensacon i'm not going to say who did it or like but i had my heart broken at pensacon i'm just going to yeah, put that I, out there i've seen it a couple of times dude I, I i don't get it i think it's um i don't know i'm not a fan of it and so when I go, I know that this is going to, by the end of the weekend, I can't even talk. I, my voice is totally shot, but it's okay. Um, I, I planned on that. Like I plan on, you know, again, I do them once in two years, I've done four of them. So it's not, you know, I, I don't do them all the time, um, but they're really exhausting. Uh, so, but they're also, if you're going to commit to doing it, do it. Do don't disappoint people 
you know, don't just have your, I've seen people, you know, some of the guests as they call them with their heads down and not even acknowledging the people, just what's your name? Like, I, I don't know that, that, that bothers me, but whatever people are going to do what they're going to do. But the fact that you were disappointed, I've heard that a number of times about certain people and it, it makes me crazy. This has to turn that around, right? Oh yeah, no, I no. Mean, as bad, like, <laughs> as, this as came out as, of Pensacon. As so. bad as that was, the for, the the to spend that money to get to meet you and get to like sit there and talk to you. Also, with uh, David Keckner over here yelling whammy in the background, <laughs> was was the absolute like best case scenario of the whole weekend. So that well, was the, awesome. the one I had done before this one a year ago or whatever. Keckner and I we did the Q and A together, and oh, you know Keckner and I were <laughs> you know were. They shouldn't keep us together. It's trouble. <laughs> it's fun. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, and this time they had Keckner and I next to it. You know, because people relate the office and Parks and Rec. You know, if if there's one, there's the other. And he was, you know, he recurred on on the office. Uh, I did one in Washington D.C. with Kate Flannery from the office, who played Meredith. I love Meredith. And Oscar and Creed, and people. Like we went out to dinner the one night and people lost their shit. First of all, I'm sorry. Can I swear on these? I don't yes. need to. Be... Hell no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I to... I'm not filthy, but I don't want to like you know. Ah, oh, we don't but care. People... You should hear our sports show. It it gets wrong. Oh, okay. it, it, yeah, it gets it gets a little it gets a little out there. We're we're toning that one down just a little just bit. A little but... bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, one time just to jump a story. One time I did a Q and A at a college in Boston, and when it was over, you know, people come up for the pictures afterward and whatever. And this girl comes up and I said, hi. And she goes, hi. And I could, I said, is everything okay? And she said, well, you were a little dirtier than I expected. <laughs> and I was like, bitch, I'm not Gary. I'm not Gary. <laughs> I know you You think I'm that character from TV. And that I wish I could be as nice and as kind and whatever. But that is, you know, Jim is Jim and Jim goes blue and uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, she's quite surprised. Oh my uh, god! No, but we were at this restaurant and people it got so out of control. This girl screamed so loud that everyone thought something there was a problem, but she couldn't. Her mind couldn't adjust to the fact that Jerry from Parks and then a couple of the office people the worlds were colliding and it just made no sense. Yeah, to her. she could not grasp it. Yeah, it, it's but it's always very sweet, you know. The, the thing about playing a character like Jerry, Gary, Larry, Terry, Barry from Parks and Rec, is that because he's so sweet, I rarely, I mean, I mean rarely ever get bad comments, bad messages. Uh, people are very kind to me because they think I'm kind of, you know, they think <laughs> yeah. that I'm Jerry. And it's very nice because I uh, I have other actor friends who don't even do social media because they're like, I don't need to be told I'm fat and ugly and untalented all day long by trolls. I just don't need it. I never get that. I really, the only time, the only time I really got it, really just once, and it was, I believe it was last year, uh, somebody went at Chris Pratt about something, something stupid, and it pissed me off. And I jumped into the fray on Twitter. And I just said, well, I just know him as one of the sweetest guys in the whole, whatever, whatever. How dare you defend him? No, oh, another I know. white nail defending another. Oh, I mean, it's like, oh, my. and then of course, you fat pig, who are you to defend? Like, it's so, <laughs> it's all so childish. And oh, yeah. Crazy. It's terrible. Those are the but same it people. The only time I've gotten bad comments and it was me defending one of my good friends so anyway it, it, it was nuts and then pratt reaches out and he's like dude you don't have thank you so much i understand how tough it is to do you don't have to do it i go oh my god that, certain things I'll, I'll go down from i mean for my friends there, there's no limits you, you do what you do you know, it's, it's funny that because uh, with those trolls those are the same people that without that screen are completely nothing yeah I mean, if you see them eye to eye, there's no way that they're going to ever say anything like that to you. Or when you go look at their stuff, private account, you can't say a word to them. Right. It, it's all so sad. I mean, it's really sad and pathetic. They're sitting in front of a computer. They can say anything they want, and there's no repercussions uh, because they're afraid. They would never go out in public and do this. Right. Yeah. The trolls are a whole different thing. But really, I rarely deal with it. I mean, 
that was the only time I ever had an onslaught and it was an onslaught. It was so, <laughs> I, I laughed my ass off because I never get that. And some of them are so mean mm -hmm. that they just, when they go, you fat pig, I'm like laughing so hard. Like that's all they could come up with. They have, it's so childish, which then of course makes me laugh. Right. So I laugh at them cool. every time. Cause they always, all they can say is I have a big nose. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Well, because they can't say you have anything else big, so that's they true. might as well stick with the nose. That's yes, exactly yeah. that's exactly right. Yeah. But I never claim to have anything else big. No, so. no, no. I was talking to your wife, and you know what she <laughs> said? She, goes, she just basically said, "I get by," yeah, and that's, I'm like, yep. "Well, you do what you do." She settled. Yeah. 100%. She's she's 100%. She's yep. Yes. I, I do have <laughs> uh, one question for you uh, before we move on to these questions. Are you a baseball fan? I enjoy it i i like here's what i love i love being at a baseball game okay. okay i love the eating and the drinking uh whenever the cubs play the dodgers they invite you know some of the chicago -y people uh to the box and we <laughs> eat and drink and laugh and there's a ton of big time celebrities there and i love that uh but do i sit every day and watch a game i do not well, I can say this, that you will be able to go to a game this year because it just did get approved. Yep. I'm not sure. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yep. So it's happening. It, it is happening. No... Breaking yeah. Okay, good. Just got I, that I mean, I know about what's going on. I know right. about the strike and all that kind of stuff. Awesome. No, but I, and I've, I, I've, twice I've thrown out the pitch at the Cubs game, the first pitch, which was exciting and scary and ridiculous. Uh, I'm doing a uh, an appearance in, oh, boy. I'm going to say for a farm team in, in Maryland, I think coming okay. up. And so I've done some stuff. Yes. I enjoy, I, I, I love baseball, but as just a fan in the, you know, in the bleachers or in the, in the box. Right. You know? If you ever come to Pensacola and do the blue Wahoos, let us know. I'd love to, I I'd love to know. go. Yeah. Yes. It's only about two and a half hours away. Yeah, so. absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Even if you had to ride a bike there, it'd be worth it. Well, yeah. have to, to see you, yeah. of course it would. It'd be a little cheaper now. <laughs> it would definitely yeah. be a little cheaper. It would cheaper. definitely be a little cheaper. Yeah. yeah. Um, my goodness. Um, so I want to go back to what you were saying about like uh, about how people always treat you that way. Like uh, people always treat you like you are Jerry. That that says a lot about the writing and like the acting skills of that show for people to like believe that that's you. Well, I don't know if you guys know this. I wrote every episode. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. I directed every episode. I play every character. Right. I did know that. So it was a lot of work. Yeah. Yes, it was a whole lot of work. Uh, no, the, the the Parks experience was, I mean, I, the same word I use all the time because it's what applies. It was a gift uh, because the writing was superb. Every week we would do a table read and I would leave that table and say to whoever was next to me, how the hell did they do it again? Because it would just blow me away that week after week, in my opinion, others could argue this, the show got stronger week after week. And to do that for seven years, and there's some of my favorite shows, some of my very favorites that I think, you know, oh, I, I'll be like, ah, oh, season four was a little wonky or, or whatever. And that happens. Writers change, they bring in different writers. Well, with Parks, we never lost our voice, which was Mike Shore. And his team stayed together for most of the show. So we never lost that sensibility of what the show was. I agree with that. So I agree with that because everybody, like, I love you saying that because, like, the, uh, oh, I'm not going to, I won't say the name specifically of the show, but, like, every every other show, like, major sitcoms, like, it, everyone's like, okay, after this character left, it, it got horrible. Right. And, and that never ever happened mm -mm. with parks and rec well i mean we i think we had a rough start our first six episodes are a little on the on the rougher side because we weren't we didn't do a pilot most shows do a pilot where you do it you shoot it and then they figure things out here's what worked here's what didn't work sometimes they change actors sometimes they change the whole damn thing I, i've i've done where they totally reworked it and the characters didn't exist any longer or you know that's what a pilot is you figure it out but Amy was the hot property. She had just left SNL and they said, shoot six of them, you know, cause they wanted uh, Mike, you know, uh, Greg Daniels who created the American office version. He and Mike Shore came together cause NBC said, give us something else. And here we got Amy Poehler. So we did six of them before they got to sit back and watch and see what worked and what didn't work. And what didn't work was Leslie, no, the character 
they felt it, she was coming across too much like Michael Shore, uh, not Michael Shore, Michael uh, Michael Scott. Mm. So many Michaels, uh, Michael Scott from The Office, and right. that was never the intention. So they were able to adjust that from season one to season two. So. In my opinion, and there's some great, funny, super funny moments in season one that are just awesome. But I think we really, we found our footing in season two and never looked back. In my opinion, others, oh. How <laughs> dare they? Spielberg. <laughs> Spielberg. <laughs> no. Yeah, one, one second, guys. Hey, Steve, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, Jurassic what? Yeah. No. <laughs> Not interested. Mandalorian? Okay. No, no, yeah. Call, call my people. Yeah, bye bye. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Try to get him off the phone. Unbelievable. Golly. I'm sorry, guys. It was a it's nuisance a, call. How dare they? Like, uh, did they not know who the Right On Network is? Uh, I was about to say, I mean, I, we put it out there. We said this was going on today. <laughs> I mean, he should have known. Yeah. He should have known. known. Yeah. <laughs> God. Golly. Well, listen, we don't want to keep you all day. But I do, I mean, you know, just like two or three more hours. Yeah. But, but I definitely. It is early there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got a while. You just woke I mean. up. No, uh, we, we definitely want to ask about that moment. You know what moment I'm talking about on Late Night with Seth Meyers. I know you've talked about uh, it yes, so I many do. times. Because, I, and, you know, maybe she'll see this one day. Aubrey, I want you to know, like, Jim O'Hare has lived my dream. <laughs> Wait, Aubrey, I'm going to talk about yeah. that scene we did on Seth Meyers. Yeah, you guys have been married for, what, 24 years now, right? 22. Yeah, 20, 22, while, yeah. yeah. She was only 15. It was, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we've seen we, that yeah, we saw that Aubrey interview. is in Italy right now. Oh, oh, okay. For four months doing, we have this thing called the Parks Family Text. So we're still in each other's lives all the time. So we all that was going to be a question that. of mine, yep. Yeah, she's in um, uh, Italy doing, um, oh, that White Lotus the oh, se second season of White Lotus. Yeah. So, you, you know, we had to break up our little family here. So, I, you know, I send her, <laughs> we sext here and there. Yeah, you know, the usual, yeah but, of course. Um, you got the yeah, kids. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yes, what was it? Yes, I do remember that night a little bit. Yes, I do. What's, I mean, what, what went in? The, like, was that planned? Was that like improv? Here's what happened. So, you know, uh, when we, the, the finale for Parks, Seth Meyers offered to give us the full hour on his show, which was super sweet. He is a huge Parks fan. He would come to LA and do the big Q and A's at the Paley Fest. Like he was, and he would never even have them give him questions. Like he would just ask us questions as a real fan. So he was, you know, That's awesome. and he and Amy are super tight, you know, from their SNL days. Yeah, they did the weekend So he offered us the time. full hour, which was amazing and so much fun. And we played games and, and it was great. So right before, the only thing that was planned was two things. One, we were going to do a toast kind of thing where we all toast each other. You pull a name out of a hat and you toast the person. And then at the very end, we were going to sing Bye Bye Little Sebastian. Pratt was going to be on the, on the guitar. So that's really <laughs> the only thing we knew that was going to happen. So we do, the show is going and we're telling stories and it's all so much fun. And then we do the toast game and then... We do it all, and now we're going to come to the end where we're going to sing Bye Bye Little Sebastian. So they go to commercial break, and it was me, and then Adam Scott was next to me, and then Aubrey. And she leans across Adam, and she says to me, hey, do you want to make out during the song? <laughs> and I said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because what's so funny about it is it goes to show how smart and funny Aubrey is. It wouldn't be funny if she's making out with Pratt or right. Adam. Like it just that, that's not what's funny. Get the fat old guy Jerry from the show, <laughs> who you've mocked on every episode. You know she's done said terrible things and done terrible things to him. And it, but to me, my favorite part of it isn't. Of course, I got to make out with Aubrey. Who, nothing to complain about there. But when I watch the video later of the cast reacting, because they had <laughs> no idea, there was, and you can tell, none of them are that good of actors that they could have played that off. Right. I mean, Aziz was like, no, yeah. no, yeah. Like, he could not even, he I, couldn't even look at it. I know? think it Pratt was the only fans. one that really like didn't make too much of a face. He didn't know what was happening. He was yeah, in he front did. of us <laughs> playing guitar. 
He doesn't even know what the hell's going on. Yeah. yeah, the whole thing. But that is the genius of Aubrey Plaza. <laughs> I could never have asked her. I would have felt like a dirty old man. <laughs> but her asking me changes the whole scenario. Yes, and it does. I could just imagine you just leaning over. Hey. <laughs> yeah, out. Exactly. <laughs> like when you did it, when you guys make out, do, yeah. do, do one of you ask first or do you just go in for it? I'm, I'm more of a, like, I rub his back. I know his spots. You, you know where to hit. Okay, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Like I, I, and then I'm like, and we just look at each other and then. And you know, yes. We almost committed. <laughs> almost happened. I like it. I like it. That's sweet. Well, yeah. that's what we were going to pitch for the Grode Show. We want to be the gay couple. That's what we want. <laughs> we're okay. Hey, with. don't rule it out. We need, yeah, we got to have the demographic. I like it. Say, oh, I'm yeah. 5'11. He's 6'6. Six, six. I mean, and we're going to look different. Wow. We will commit. We will commit. Wow. <laughs> Boy, you wouldn't know it the way you guys are sitting that you're 6'6 six, six and you're 5'11. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you really... I mean, I could stand up and get out of frame, but. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I met you. I know you're a tall yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm only 5'11. That's yeah. it. Little fella. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But actually, 5'11, I think, is a standard. Uh, it's a good height for a guy. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually sitting on the floor. Yeah. So that's. I got to wow, be average. Will... <laughs> See, I got to be average in one thing. I mean, my wife complains yes. all the time about the other thing not being below average. So I've got to be average at least. Yeah. At least one. one average. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, Good thank you. you. And then we've already <laughs> talked about the above average. We've already talked about that one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where I'm at. My belly's getting a little bit bigger. So <laughs> jury's still out. But um, so we want to play oh, this game. Oh, you guys, you froze up again. Oh, oh goodness. No. There we go. We're coming back. We're going to come back. You can still hear us, right? There you are. Okay. Yeah, you're there it is. Oh, you're back. There it is. Okay, right. I told you, low budget. I yeah. told you. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying. We're yeah. trying out here with webcams in the workshop. <laughs> um, so we're going to play this little game that we like to play with guests that we have on. Uh, we play a little rapid fire to where we'll, we'll spit you some questions. You'll give a quick answer to us. And then, uh, so Nick's going to ask the first couple, and then I'm going to come over and ask you about a couple actors in the same sense that you've okay. worked with. All right. So first thing is going to be favorite superhero and villain. Like maybe the matchup. Oh, uh, oh, damn, that's good. That's so good. Oh, I gotta do it quick. Oh, oh 10 God. seconds, Jim. Come on. <laughs> Superman. I love. I, I think Superman gets so much good stuff. So I'm gonna go Superman. Okay. Go. Uh, and and uh, the Riddler. Oh. Okay. Oh. All right. Have you seen the new Batman movie? I have not. Oh. Okay. I'll shut my yeah. mouth. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm super. Should I be excited to see? One hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah, super excited. Yeah. I really see that's the kind of thing. I love a big fan. I just love that kind of big presentation. I'm a big fan. We actually did a reaction on that video yeah. on our nerd culture. I actually so just you dropped check this it out. Yeah. Uh, oh, nice. Go to quick meal. Go Doesn't to, have to I, be quick. I do love a Chipotle. No, oh, okay. All right. I do love a burrito from Chipotle. Not sure yeah. if you drink, but go to alcoholic beverage. Uh, I am a beer guy. Always yes. have been. IPA, uh, Pilsner. Uh, I like and love a Pilsner. Love an Amber. Uh, I do, I don't like uh, which I wish I did because my friends drink it. I don't like the dark uh, black and tan or mm. the uh, uh, the super dark lagers. To me, they're too thick, and yeah. I'm so full after drinking one of them. Yeah. And anyway, so it's more. I do give me a, a Pilsner, a nice amber. I'm on board. Yeah, yeah. Th those Guinnesses and stuff like that are all more along like a, sitting around a fire, like just with friends and no yeah. food. Yep. Yeah, no food. <laughs> I just for me, it just. I, I wish I did. It's like I wish I drank wine, and I only say that because everywhere I go. Every event, would you like red or white? I'm like, give me a beer. Like, I, 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 I don't enjoy wine. So, not me I, either. I just don't enjoy it. I, w I wish I did. Life would be easier. Yeah. I do like myself a nice wine sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. no, it's good. People love it. Yeah. I, I, I just don't. I just drink red wine with red meat. That's yeah. about the only yeah. time That's I ever fair. drink it. Well, it makes, I know you're supposed to red with meat, white with fish. I mean, right. it, yeah. you know, there's certain things you do. I would drink beer with me beer with fish so it, it's either or <laughs> how do you order your steak jim i i know this wasn't on here but i want to i want to know i do like a medium rare my yeah. friend i like it a little a little uh mm. a little beyond pinkish uh i like a filet i like i don't like to i don't want my meat chewy because then i feel like it's an animal and then i can get in my head about that it's an animal <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh if it's nice and super tender i am on board Nice. Uh, favorite dessert? Oh, dude, we could be here all day. Uh, <laughs> I mean, oh, I was in, you know, in Vegas, I did this food tour kind of thing at these restaurants, and they had this thing that I had never had before called the butter cake. Have you ever heard of butter cake? No, oh, but I wish I had. Yeah. Well, look it up. I had never heard of it either. Holy shit. I mean, 
oh my god so, and <laughs> you're so full by the dessert because you go to these four different restaurants it's a whole thing and i was like oh i'm just gonna have a bite of something no no give me that butter bring that butter cake and slap it all over me i'm gonna take my pants off and just wipe it on me i mean it was <laughs> that's, amazing that's a grow so, show episode there there it is definitely so that's my new favorite but uh, give me a my god give me a sunday give me a cheesecake give me a it, it, it's too open yeah it's too open i got gotcha. you uh yeah. favorite cur- current television show that you're not on yeah, that you're okay. not on. I, I have now been catching up on Ozark, and I am in. Love it. I am in, 100%. I finished, and this isn't, no spoilers, because I, I, I hate when people do that, but the end of season three, uh, something happened that I, and I'm a 60-year-old adult male. I yelled out loud when it happened. <laughs> like, I literally was watching, and I went, whoa! Like, and I love that. And I love when a show does that to me. And I love when it's legit. You know, like, because sometimes you're like, that, that, no, that really didn't make sense because now this and that. This was legit. And I I yelled right out loud. So that's that's my, that's my new thing. All right, you've talked me into it. I've, everybody's been telling me about Ozark and yeah. I haven't gotten into it. You I should. guess I'll you start. Really should do right it. now it's we're good. watching Yellowstone, so that's where we're at right now. But we only got like I one hear more. that's amazing. Yeah, I it's a great seen show. It. I, there's so much, so much good stuff out there. It's non-ending. Yep. yep. You know, people go, "Have you seen this?" I go, "Seen it? I haven't even heard of it." Yeah. <laughs> everyone, you know, uh, like Ted Lasso's. And oh, you know, Ted oh Lasso's gosh. amazing. I love Ted I, Lasso. Have you, you know worked? Brandon Hunt? Uh, Brandon Hunt, who worked, uh, who plays Coach Beard. Uh, we had done a series together a couple of years ago called Bless This Mess, and we both recurred on it. And season two, we come back for the first episode, and Brendan wasn't there. And I was like, what? Ha- what? I, I couldn't imagine they got rid of him. He was so funny. And they said, no, he's shooting something in London. I go, really? Anyway, so he comes back after, you know, to the show, and we're talking. He goes, yeah, it's called Ted Lasso. I don't think anybody expected it to be what it turned out to be. It like, is, I mean, he's my favorite one of the character. Guys too. who's acting like, I don't know, hopefully, like, oh my God, unbelievable. <laughs> well, you know, Sadekis is gold. Yeah. I mean, that's that goes without saying. Exactly. I still love watching. <laughs> it's so stupid. But when he does the running man on the SNL episode, what up with that? <laughs> Sorry. That just kills me every time. I, that's the what up with that scenes, right? I talk about what that, up with that, that all exactly. the time. He gets in the background. He's just doing his little corny smile. And and just doing his bit. And I, I don't know. It makes me laugh. I feel like we would get along. We need to do a butter. We need to do an Ozark watch party with butter cake and beer. Just like Michelob Ultra. Yeah. I'm I'm on board. The only thing that would make it perfect is if you couldn't make it, you know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we could do it through yeah. Zoom, whatever. <laughs> I'll turn my camera. Off. <laughs> uh, so that's a dick. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we're done after this. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> uh, favorite sport slash favorite team. Well, you know, love me some football, and of course. You know, just because it was where it's where you're raised. Yeah. Uh, so the Bears, Ugh. you know, the Bears, the Bears. Uh, it's okay, it's where you are. It's it's what you know. It's uh, you know. But again, and we were talking baseball earlier. I did live in Wrigleyville for a lot of years, so I do love the Cubs. But as far as um, like I said, baseball for me is more about eating and drinking and just having fun. For football, I'm watching the game. I'm seeing what's happening. So yeah, I would say football and the Bears. Football definitely brings you to a different different uh place in your head like you're standing in the stands and somebody starts screaming from another team and it's the one time even if you're not a violent person you turn around and you say <laughs> one more word and i promise you i'm gonna punch you in the mouth yeah exactly one more i'm gonna make the, gonna make the news tonight yeah <laughs> i'm gonna make the news <laughs> that's exactly right even if that person's rooting for the same team it doesn't matter oh yeah exactly. they start rooting against you, your favorite player or something oh yeah Shut up. yeah <laughs> i totally agree all right i'm gonna spit off some actors that you've worked with uh obviously yeah. a couple most mostly from Parks and Recreation. And I want you to say like the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the name. Oh, okay. So we'll start Aubrey Plaza. Uh, 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 brilliantly dark and funny. I thought he was going to say soft lips, but go that's ahead. Fine. Well, that's fine. Yeah. and soft tongue. <laughs> yeah. And that's the other thing. You know, when I, this is off topic, but years ago, hanging out with Rob Lowe one day, you know, as you do. And, you know, Rob has done a movie with everybody. He's, you know, 
he's had so many sex scenes because he's the leading man and blah, blah, blah. Well, that has never been my career. My career does not get me laid in the in the movie. It just doesn't. <laughs> Though in Middleman, I had my first love scene and it was so crazy and weird and, and whatever. I've got but, it written down. I'm watching it tonight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I am too. Check it out. It's really dark. And I'm really proud of it. But anyway, so, but Rob had said to me, he goes, because I had said, we were, I was just asking him quite like, so how do you know how far you can go? And he goes, well, it's totally up to the woman. Whatever, however far she wants to go, that's where you go. So he had said to me, you know, you go in for the kiss, fine, mouths are closed. If she were to open her mouth a little, then you can reciprocate. If she then were to engage her tongue, then you can reciprocate. But of course, this is all, <laughs> the woman is doing this. So the Aubrey thing, she says, do you want to make out? Well, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so when we go to do it, all that kept running through my mind is what Rob was telling me. <laughs> well, only do what she does. Only do what she does. Well, she had that mouth. She had that tongue in my mouth in two seconds. So it's like, boom, we're in. Yeah. We are in. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> boom. <laughs> well, it's funny because Rob Lowe was the next one. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, storyteller. Um, uh, 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 man, Ben, he... He's a guy who's been there. He's done it all. He's seen it all. He's slept with it all. He's just <laughs> like, he's, uh, he's really a phenomenon. I, uh, I didn't know what to expect of him. He came into the show, you know, see, uh, season two episode, I don't know, 20 something. So we had already had kind of our groove going on and you don't know what that's going to be like. We brought in him and Adam Scott the same day and uh, it was just seamless. So just a lot of laughs. I could hear him tell stories all day long. By the way, if you got stories on these guys, like we're only we're only cutting short for you. Like if if you want to go on a tangent about it, like, like you did with Aubrey, <laughs> oh. please feel free. Like we're we're here until we're here all night doing yep. other things. So we're good. If you want to go on, uh, Chris Pratt, funny, crazy funny, um, uh, smart. Uh, kind incredibly kind he would be he would have more trouble than i ever had with all the different jerry bits he'd be like jim this one feels really rough he goes are you okay i go dude we're all making a lot of money and it's funny so we're all good you know it's all good so really kind uh he has a warm heart just a, I, I love him i just love him on a, another interview i uh, heard you talk about a comedy group that you were a part of when you got out yeah. of broadway or um, um, yeah, Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Out of Chicago. Yeah. Uh, how do I find that? I looked it up and I couldn't find it on you. But is there is any of that out there where we can actually watch it? It's so funny. I don't know. It, you got to remember that we're talking. It was called White. The comedy group was called White Noise, and right. we're talking. We formed in um, it was eighty six, like around nineteen eighty six. Okay. So you know, nowadays everyone's got their cameras and their phones and and everything. It was a different world. So I right. don't know what's out there, but uh, it's something I'm super proud of. We did some amazing stuff and we're st we still are all in contact this many years later. The guy who wrote and directed Middleman wrote it for me. He was one of the white noise guys. The play that I came out to LA with from Chicago that got me my career called Stumpy's Gang was written by Pat Cannon, another one of the guys from the group. So um, it was an amazing for me, really life altering uh, that I got in with those people. Um, we the 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 tough part about LA uh, moving to LA is you you, you got to get representation because without people out there trying to get you you know into the doors, it's tough to get into the doors. And when I moved here, no one gave a crap. I, I'm just another guy from Chicago. Well, I started doing this play that we brought out to LA, and it garnered a lot of interest it had puppets in blood and it was ridiculous it was so crazy this play was called stumpy's gang and it was crazy you can find pictures online of me with these puppets and they would spew blood and they oozed and anyway it was wild is this the one that but you it, talked about having a big vagina and stuff like that? a big vagina <laughs> puppet that ended up killing you know as vaginas will do ended up killing yeah, yeah and, we, uh, we know how it goes yes yes <laughs> They've certainly had more control over me than I ever yeah. wanted. Yeah. It, is, it is what it is. No, but they, um, because of that play, all of a sudden agents and managers were coming to see the show because it was getting word of mouth was taking off. 
And so all of a sudden I had representation and that changes everything, everything. So all of a sudden I'm out there auditioning and getting jobs and booking and doing this and this. Um, so yeah, white noise, just a I'm very, very big part of my life. I'm going to yeah. try to find it. Is it on the dark web? Good luck. I don't know, really know what's out there because again, it was so many years ago. Right. I don't know. I'm looking if everywhere. You find something, send it yeah. to me. I'd love to see it. Gotcha. I'm yeah. looking everywhere. Dark web, Pornhub. We're looking. All of them. All the- <laughs> yeah, look. I'm, I'm gonna search it. I don't know about putting Stumpy in on Pornhub. Yeah, I don't try. <laughs> no, yeah. about all that. I don't. You know I- what? I think Pornhub must have had a problem because I got an email from them today saying I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I've seen everything. So they said something about check out something else. Yeah. <laughs> you, you broke it. You broke Apparently Pornhub. I have yeah. broken Pornhub. Yes. That's impressive. That's impressive. And I have one more question before we get back to the actors. So um, I'm a huge fan of improv. So in your roles that you, that you normally get, some of the more side roles and stuff like that, how much do they allow you in that role of, of improv to, to actually take that and make it, a, make it your own? Well, it all depends. It depends. I've been on sh- I've been on sets where you are told from day one we are word for word, meaning here's the script, here are the words, these are the words we're going to use, and that's all it was. Uh, I personally, everyone can have their own opinion on this. I think let the actor go a little bit and bring what he brings to it. Um, like for me, the perfect example, and this doesn't even relate to me, but like with Pratt. The openings of the first Guardians, that's Pratt. Yep. That's ultimate Pratt. And I don't know what happened there, but my guess is they just let him do what he does. And if that doesn't sink you into that film in the first five minutes, then I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, So I am a big believer in letting us play a little. We got to play every day on Parks and Rec. Every day. We did a fun run and we got to you know, after the scene was done and everybody was happy with it, the way it was written, which was always so brilliant anyway, but they would still let us do these fun runs. And it did two things. One, some st- great stuff would come out of it. And two, it kept us, I think it's wh- why we stayed so tight. We got to play together every day. So, uh, but no, there are shows that will say, no, 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 uh-uh. here's our words. And I respect that. If they tell me that's how we are playing it, I am on board because these writers have worked hard and I respect that. But I love when they'll say, okay, "Okay, we got it. Uh, You know, do what you want. It's yeah, funny. But you never know. Every production's different, so it's hard to say. Right. My my wife and I, we both love improv, but I, I'll always yeah. come home when I find, like, a new clip that I find out this part is improv. I mean, yeah. and it always seems like you're just, like, blown away by it. Like, because that means that you've really put that uh, character into your head. Like, you completely yeah. transformed yourself into that character and made it you. And I, I that's just one of my favorite things. I, I just had to ask. And you know, in, improv can be horribly painful. Yeah, but it can also be brilliant. Right, you know what I mean. It's the nature of the beast. It's, right, it's, and if you haven't failed at improv, then you then you should never have exceed, succeeded because you need both. Right, right. Um, and yeah, so improv is, yeah. Is it true that, that it's yes and everything is yes well, I mean, and? If you if you're gonna follow the rules, that's the number one basic rule. Yes and. Right. You're not gonna go on a, um, you know. And I've been in these scenes where they just go off the rails. And, you know, you walk in and you go, um, hi, I'm Dr. You know, uh, David Smith from the Something Institute. And the other actor goes, you're not a doctor. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Let's yeah. shut this shit down. Because <laughs> you have just now negated everything I just, you know. Right. So, no, it should have been, well, doctor. And then you can you build you build right, you build. anyway right. yeah that's that's nuts. I think one of the greatest off uh, off off screen moments of Parks and Rec was uh, when Chris Pratt used like improv the Kim Kardashian line. Oh, oh my yeah. god! Oh my god! Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the best uh, <laughs> blooper scene of any show in the history of cinema. Uh, of yeah, the and what I love about like that kind of thing because remember we had already probably done the scene a bunch of times or whatever. Right. So. When he start, and this would not just with Chris, but with any one of us, you know, when someone's starting to go off the rails because you know the scene, and so you're sitting there and you're like, "Oh, this isn't the scene. Where is this going to go?" And then, of course, in that case, 
uh, you know, you saw a reaction. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It was. And awesome. of course, I also love they cut. You know, on that blooper. T- on that blooper, they. You know, they cut to me and Nick, of course, because we're like <laughs> losing our shit. And then they cut to Amy and Rashida, who are like, mm-hmm, yeah, uh-huh. you <laughs> yeah. know, because you know they're thinking idiot boys. Yep. Just stupid oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Boys. <laughs> uh, so Nick Offerman was the next one. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just got to see Nick last week. We did a, um, we actually ended up singing Bye Bye Little Sebastian for an audience who didn't know we were there. Oh, and it was dude, so cool. But incredible. And also Nick is completely shaven and I've got a beard these days. So it was, <laughs> it was kind of weird. Um, wow, what does he say about Nick? Um, so strong, um, um, kind of brilliant. He, he, I, Sometimes when we're talking, I'm thinking he's too smart for me to talk to because the words he uses, um, he's so talented and not just as an actor, but as a woodworker and he's a good husband and a good friend. Um, he's a good he, he's a good family man. His parents are so lovely. Um, I love his parents and uh, his siblings. He has a brother who is an actor. He's not doing acting now, but he was an actor for a while. Um, he's a family man and, and just... Uh, I know this makes no sense to say about an actor, I guess, but salt of the earth. Kyle, have that. you ever looked up his woodworking? I, yeah, yeah. Look, yeah, his, oh, yeah. His website. I awesome. heard you looked up his woodworking. Yeah, yeah I heard all <laughs> about that. Another favorite yeah. scene from Parks and Rec where yeah. his yeah. actual wife, I can't, what, oh my gosh. Megan Mullally. So yeah. yeah, she comes in and she goes, look at all this wood needing to be worked. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, all right, so Steve Carell. Oh, wow. Steve is so fun. Steve, another super, super, super sweet guy. And here's here's the thing about Carell. The, he's the, the last job I did in Chicago before I moved to LA was a voice job. And it was with Steve. And I, I, I always, in my head, I think it was Miller Lite, but I don't know. I feel it was some beard voiceover on commercial we both did. So then he moves to LA. I think he moved before I did. However, and then I hear about the office. So I start watching because here's a guy from Chicago that I knew, you know, obviously I was hooked on the office immediately. So, but the thing about Steve with all of his success, he is as, he is as nice and sweet and kind as he was in the Chicago days. And believe me, I've seen where it doesn't work that way. And it goes to people's heads. And because you're, been, you're being told by everybody, all the sycophants, well, how wonderful you are, and blah blah blah. He's never lost it. All during um, uh, during the office, and then I would see him at mass every once in a while. Him and his wife, and anyway, blah blah blah. Uh, and then I did a film with him um, called uh, Oh Gosh, The um, End of the World. Him yeah, and Kara Knightley. Yep, yeah, uh, uh, we were. That's the one we were looking. That's how we. Uh, that's how we. Seeking your friend for the end of the yeah, world. Seeking right. your friend for the end of the world. Yeah. Um, and it was just awesome. Uh, he, he, I don't know. I, I, I respect the hell out of him. He could have, he had an opportunity to have it all go another way, personality wise and how to treat people. He didn't, he keeps it real and he's super kind. I just got two more. Um, Paul Rudd. Well, I don't know Paul Rudd. Well, he came and okay. did a couple episodes of parks. He was laughed our asses off. I have a buddy from white noise who ended up in advertising and he joked he goes you know i gave that kid a start and so when uh you know in some commercial out of chicago or whatever and so when paul was doing the show we sent my friend a video paul doing the video and he says ned you had nothing to do with my career you know it was just like <laughs> it was perfect so uh super nice but i I don't know him well. I, right. I really don't know him well. That's fair enough. And of course, you know, I wasn't going to let this happen without asking about Amy Poehler. Well, you know, horrible, mean, <laughs> uh, seems, untalented, seems like it. Uh, just the worst. Uh, no, <laughs> it's, it's exactly my impression. Like I'm, uh, whenever I talk, Wait, what'd you say? I said that was exactly my impression of her. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, she is so amazing she's not just we know she's funny and 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 talented and everything but she is a um she's a good human being a very kind human being she was our mother on that set even though i'm 10 years older than amy nine or 10 whatever it is i'm I'm older than amy much older 
And um, she was always checking in with us. How are things, you know, any issues? Um, she's incredible and so smart and such a good writer. She wrote some of our best episodes. She directed episodes of the show. She does it all. She does it all. She's an incredible mom. Um, she's really uh, the whole, the package. She is the whole package. I, I'll, I'll do this story really quickly because it goes on and on, but I'll, I'll condense it. We're wrapping up Parks and Rec and uh, Entertainment Weekly is going to give us the cover and then a bunch of pages inside the magazine. That's exciting. I've never been on a cover of a magazine before. So a couple of days before the shoot for the uh, for them, uh, me and Retta, who played Donna on the show, we get a call from our publicist saying, we did everything we could, but you won't be on the cover. They think it's going to be too crowded. It's not going to happen. So we were incredibly disappointed. I mean, really, I mean, I, I shouldn't speak for Retta, but I was really hurt. It hurt. It meant that we were lesser than. Like they didn't think we were as important as the others. And by that point, I was one of five or four who had never missed an episode. I'd been in every single episode. So anyway, the shoot day comes, we're doing it. We're shooting the stuff that's going to go in the magazine. And then it's time to shoot the cover. And I said to Retta, let's just go and hang in my trailer. Because we didn't want to stand around and watch that. That'd be a little tough to watch. Yeah. And uh, so the wardrobe person comes over and she goes, you guys, your shirts are, because everybody was going to wear a white shirt on the cover. And she said, your shirts are in your trailers. And we said, we're not in it. She looked at us. She had tears in her eyes. And she said, yes, you are. Your shirts are in your trailers. So we didn't know what was going on. We really did not know what was going on. We go to our trailer, we get dressed, we come out and we shoot the cover. Well, here's what ended up happening. When Entertainment Weekly got there earlier in the day, they went over everything with Amy, what they were going to do, because she had ultimately has final approval. And Amy said, well, where's Jim and Retta on the cover? And they said, well, it's just, it's going to be too many people. We're going to put them, you know, they'll have coverage in the magazine. And Amy goes, that's okay. No, we'll, we'll all be on it. And so <laughs> they had to call them, because believe me, the, the, everyone had tried to make this happen. But whoever was the head of Entertainment Weekly at the time, too many people, too many people. They had to call him and say, it's either all of them or none of them. Well, it was all of us. So if you that's want awesome. to know who Amy Poehler is, that's who Amy Poehler is. Because remember, that doesn't affect Amy's career, right. whether Jim and Retta are on the cover with her. If anything, it takes space away from her. But that's who Amy Poehler is. That's awesome. Um, I love that. Worried about others. It's not just about herself. Man, I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. You, you get a little, yeah. Give me a little, give me a little flush. Don't yeah, me, yeah. Oh, dude, now for that you one. hear the whole story because it's too much to go into. But there were, it was a very emotional time. We were all emotional anyway because we were wrapping it up, and that was emotional. And then our reps were all upset that we weren't going to be on the cover, and so there was, oh, it, it was all back and forth. It was a lot of craziness, um, but ultimately it didn't matter because the one person who had the power used the power. I like how and, you said uh, when we hear the whole story, because when we all hang out again, this is, I mean, you're going to have plenty of time to just tell us about it when we're watching yeah. Ozark and drinking our beer. You, you and, got that right, Bob. Yeah, they, <laughs> you got that right. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, Bob, and, 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 and we'll do that soon. We'll, we'll, oh boy, we're getting a bad connection. Yeah. It's been fun, you guys. Oh boy. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Jim, thank you so much oh, for giving yes. us your time. Uh, this, this has been just so much better than could have been expected. Yes. Um, thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. I it love, was. it was, uh, I just love the rambling back and forth. It's my kind of podcast. <laughs> we, we never like, I, I think my uh, producer RJ just hit record like right when you got on and we started going on and on. So there was like never an official start of the interview. And I think that was awesome. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, if I've said anything terrible, I apologize. Yeah. And if I should have said something <laughs> terrible, I will in the future. Yeah, there you go. So you oh. can count on me to screw it up at some point. RJ wants to say something to you. One second. Nah, you made my life pretty easy. Yeah. I ain't, ain't got to cut, cut none out. That should be straight. RJ, it is my only goal is to make your life easier. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> you trying to you trying to send me some film jobs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a so cinema. listen. I, I, we should wrap this up. We're me getting to see you guys make out, right? That's how this yeah, is going to wrap. Absolutely, up. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on. Like we, we we only kiss with our shirts off. 
So yeah, I got it. I mean, well, of course. <laughs> Do I take my belt off this time too? Or that was just oh, last okay. time? And there we go. <laughs> that was okay. good fun. Now my job get hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here, let me put on my headpiece. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Just yeah. for Jim, because he's. I mean, he wow. Doesn't know what Wait, I gotta get my glasses on. Let me look. There we go. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I just, wow. I, I know mm-hmm. you don't know what this is, apparently, but. No, I do know what that is. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. But that can't fit on your head, can it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Really? You want to see it happen? Yeah. Right? <laughs> we got we, Jim O'Hare is watching like a cuck for take me. Your you want to take the hat off? Yeah. <laughs> Jim O'Hare wants to cuck. Watch me like put my yeah. Mandalorian. I like it. Wow. Move the yeah, yeah, that's stories. No, there put the headphones go. on. You're tripping. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Wow. I like it. Now, what show is that from? I don't know. I think there's a uh, Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> Oh, man. Crazy. Okay, you guys, thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. Jim, thank, thank you, you Jim. for coming on. This was awesome. And I got a new con- favorite keep actor. Keep in mind, if you contact me again, I will have the police after you. <laughs> Understandable. Yes. Understandable. We I'm would gonna expect you nothing you different. <laughs> thank you. I'm going to send you a copy of this. You as thank well. You. Thank you. Take thank care. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Dude, that was...